Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to go through and give you all an updated walkthrough of my old game account. It has been a couple months now since my last update. Uh, the last video I did going over the account in general was back in January, and in that video I went through and did Astro 28 and 29, which left me at just under one and a half billion points. And I had discussed the upcoming US merge, which was going to force me off the server that I was playing on because they were shutting it down and how I was getting sort of screwed over by what the merge options were. So I ended up needing to utilize the graveyard, like I talked about in that video, to get to a universe with settings that matched what I had before. So in this video, I'm going to go through and talk to you about what the new universe is like compared to the old universe I was on. Then I'm going to go through, take a look at my planets, my mine production, the, the moons, the research, the fleet, uh, the items I have in my inventory. And as many of you have requested, I'm also going to be going through and looking at the add-ons that I'm currently using. And then lastly, I'll be looking at my plans for this universe and for my account in general. So all of these topics you see up on screen now will be listed down below as timestamps or chapters. So feel free to skip ahead if you want. Before I get too far into things though, I do want to just quickly mention that I do have an affiliate link down in the description below for Ogame. If you are a new player or an existing player looking to start up on a different universe, you can use this affiliate link and it will give me a commission on any dark matter that you purchase on that account on that universe. So when you hit this link, it'll open up this Ogame supporter creator page with the screen button on it. It doesn't seem to open up on Firefox for me, but if you use Edge or Chrome or something else, it'll pop up a sign up or sign in. You just go through that and then select the universe that you want to start up on. And I will then get a commission on any dark matter you purchase, which then helps me out helps me pay some bills and helps me get more dark matter occasionally on my account. So if you want to support me, then please consider hitting that affiliate link the next time you want to start up on a different universe. And I want to start off here just taking a look at the universes that I was given as an option to merge into. And then, of course, take a look at Valon's versus Terra Zed. So let's pull up Terra Zed here. Terra Zed again was a one times fleet speed universe with eight times eco and the universes that I was given an option to move my account to were Yildin or Himalaya. Now Himalaya had 10 times eco, you know, which is quite appealing. I won't lie, but the downside is it's four times fleet speed. Now, for those of you that have played Ogame for a while, you know that playing on a one times fleet speed is typically quite a different experience from playing on, you know, a high fleet speed universe. And going from 1x to 4x, not really a fun time. On a 1x universe, an attack might take, let's say, 30 minutes to hit you. On a 4x universe, that means it could literally be like 6 to 7 minutes for an attack to arrive, so... In the time you're going to the bathroom, someone may have seen your fleet and may have launched an attack on you, you know, in that short of a time and had it land. So not a fun time and it's much more active than what a 1x is. And for Yildin, Yildin had the same economy that Terrazad had, um, but the issue was it had two times war speed, two times holding speed, so... Things like attacks or ACS defenses were twice as fast as what they were on Terra Zed. But the big issue is that it was six times peaceful fleet speed, meaning that things like transports or deployments were six times faster than what they were on Terra Zed. And for me, that was just a big no. I, I sometimes have had points where I need to fleet save for an extended time. And you can do like a 40 to 60 hour 10% quite easily on, on a 1x fleet speed universe. But if it's six times faster than that, you know, a 60 hour, a 60 hour deployment moon to moon fleet save may suddenly end up being 10 hours, you know, on a 6x peaceful speed here. So just a really big jump. And I just wasn't a fan of either of these universes. I like the, the peace the peace of mind that you get on a 1x fleet speed universe. You don't have to sit at the 
or stare at the game all day. So just wasn't a fan of either of those options. So I ended up utilizing the graveyard server, which I'll be talking about more in a future video for those of you that also want to utilize it. And what I did is I went over to the Valange universe. Valange is somewhat comparable to what TerraZed was, and it allowed me to remain on the .us community. So it's also one times fleet speed for everything, eight times economy, but it's only four galaxies versus TerraZed's nine. The debris field is twice what TerraZed had, so attacks can be a lot more profitable and the deuterium cost is half of what it was on Terra's Ed. So while it is the fleet speed I was wanting, it's not as peaceful settings wise as what Terra's Ed, had, Terra's Ed was, but it's good enough, good enough for me. It's better than these, these other options, which are just way too fast. So let's head over to Valance now. And you can see I currently have 1.64 billion points and I am rank three. And if we compare that to where I was at the end of the last video, I was at 1.5 billion points on Terra's head and I was ranked ninth. Now, the reason I'm such a higher rank here is because not everyone went through the graveyard process and moved to this universe. Other people did go through the graveyard, but they went to other universes. The graveyard gives you a list of options for what universe to move your account to, so people chose other places. Some people went over to .org Universe 1, some people, you know, went elsewhere. Um, so not everyone came over here. And if I look at the high score, um, I did have a couple from my alliance able to get in. I've got Alan here, who has a really large metal mine setup, and Demon Freak also was able to make it over, and I think he's already done a video over on his YouTube channel, so... I'll have that link down below if you want to check out his turtle setup. Um, but we had a couple make it over from uh, from Terra's Ed. From Pixels, it was myself, Alan, and Demon. And I don't think anyone else was able to get over. People were having issues getting the graveyard to, to show Valance as an option for him. It would show up one day and not the next. And now it's against the rules for some of them to join, so... Some people are just not going to be able to get over with their original accounts for the time being. Um, a bunch of people here from Noob were able to get over, um, but some of the really large accounts from Terra Zed aren't here, uh, like Ace, Wraith, uh, Mercury. I don't know where all of their accounts have went, but uh, per some of the messages that I saw them put in, like the O Game Discord, it sounds like some of them may have just quit the game. So, points wise, overall, you know, I'm rank three here. 1.64 billion economy wise i'm ranked fifth with 807 million economy research wise i'm ranked second at 360 million and military wise i am currently rank one with 523 million points and just under 26 million ships now even though i'm the top military player on this universe with the largest fleet that does not mean that i'm not fleet saving on the contrary, ACS is enabled on this universe, which means that, in theory, the rank 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9 players, they, they could all team up together. They could team up together and very easily take my fleet out. So, every time that I step away from my computer for an extended amount of time, or if I'm unable to check my phone for a couple hours, my fleet is going to be on a moon-to-moon -moon deployment. To this day, I still operate under the mentality that an unattended fleet is a dead fleet. So regardless of what your size is, regardless of how large your fleet is compared to the competition out there, make sure you're fleet saving. Okay, so now I want to go through and just do a quick rundown of what all my planets look like. Um, so I'm going to tell you right off the bat that many of these planets are basically the same thing over and over again. I don't have a ton of defenses on the majority of planets. I don't have much fleet on any of them. Um, and the mines are pretty much static across most of them with a couple of minor exceptions. And the majority of them are slot 15s or were formerly slot 15s that got moved around in the merge. Uh, so in this case, this planet, this has a temp of negative 122, but you see it's in slot 13. So during the merge and the graveyard processes, Sometimes your planet will 
get pushed up to like slot 14 or 13, or it might be moved over a system. And when that happens, you retain the original temperature that your planet had. So even though this is slot 13, this was once a slot 15 before the merge and before the graveyard. So it retains the temperature that it had from back in the day. If I were to go through and relocate this planet, then that temperature would, of course, change to, to whatever it is for, for that slot. And then, of course, the RNG factor with that. So my account is set up with a slot 15 minor focus for deuterium mining. Um, this is a more classical approach, which I'll cover on more in the future, what the difference is between this and the slot 8 stuff. Um, but most of my planets are, or 14 of them are set up for dupe mining stuff, and then there's two in slot 8. And given most of my account is focused on slot 15, what I'll probably end up doing is just moving um, these slot 8s down to 15 over time, if, if I can... Uh, get lucky with some relocations there. So that might be something I do, or I may just leave them at slot eight. Either way, most of this uh, account is set up for the slot 15 stuff. So we take a look at the the mines here. Um, this, this little thing from OG Light does summarize everything. You can see almost all the mines are 45 metal, 37 crystal, and about 42 deuterium on average. Um, you can see the temperatures here, most of them. Uh, if a planet is under negative 120 for deuterium, then that's good for me. Um, if it's not negative 120, I usually will try to, to relocate it again to try and get that RNG. But there are a couple of these where there's just nothing I can do about the temps because they're in safe systems. And if it's slot 8, then, well, the, the temperature is different for slot 8. So... This planet here, 45, 37, 42 mines. And the facilities here are basically what you're going to see on basically every planet. Like 14 robotic. And the reason I do a higher robotic shipyard and research lab than I technically need is because I've got the slots. And you do get a speed increase for building still or for... Uh, building ships or defenses from from having those at a higher level so it, it still can be worth upgrading past like level 12 i think a lot of people stop at like 10 or 12 on both of those on most planets but you can still go past that if you want to speed things up a little bit more um alliance depot of course at zero um missile silo at eight and i done 10 most of my planets are in night 10 now there might be one or two that aren't and i'll fix that over time Terraformer 8, and Space Dock 8. Shipyard, this is the only planet I'm going to show the shipyard on, because basically every other one is the exact same. There might be like one or two recyclers, a couple espionage probes, and then a couple thousand large cargoes for the daily resource transportation. And defenses are quite underwhelming. Like, I don't really do too much with defenses on most planets. This will deter a low level account that maybe wants to try and hit me to get my daily production. Um, but realistically, if a large account with a large fleet wanted to get past these defenses, this is basically nothing. Um, but thankfully on this universe, people aren't hitting for your daily production. So everything is fine for now. If that changes, then I'll adjust my defenses as needed to protect the daily production which on this planet is 43 million metal a day, 9 million crystal, and then uh, about 16 and a half uh, million deuterium per day. So you're going to see now that most of these planets are the exact same thing. You know, this, this heavy slot 15 focus here, this planet's a negative 130. It has a relocation on it temporarily just to lock slots on that safe system that won't actually go through with relocation. Um, so, in fact, I don't even want to risk it with the temp here. I don't want to forget in the morning, so I'm going to cancel this. Go here. And relock that quick. Go. So when you have the relocation 
in progress. Nobody else can relocate to that slot or colonize for it. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about locking the slot. And then I'll pass that off to an Alliance member when they want to go through and get it. Um, so this, this planet, similar mines. Uh, this one does have, or wrong planet. Um, this one does have a slightly higher deuterium mine because it's negative 130 temp. It does also have a uh, plus 40% dute production booster running on it. Um, facilities, basically the same. And I should clarify my power source is fusion reactors. Um, I do have a fairly high energy tech level. And fusion reactors, what's nice about them is they won't go away. Like you, you can't hit fusion reactors like you could solar sats. So fusion reactors are always going to give you power, even if someone attacks you. Um, it's, it's pretty static. The only downside is, is that they do drain some deuterium, but in my opinion, that deuterium cost is worth the just constant, no mess energy production they offer. You never have to worry about rebuilding your energy production if you're attacked with fusions, which is very nice. And they give you a lot of power without using a lot of slots. Like the the solar plants, those are really bad to, to have once you've built your account up. They eat up a lot of slots, don't give you much power. The solar sats are, are good on a warm planet, but another issue with me having um, a slot 15 setup here is that solar sats don't really do much. Solar sats on this this spot give me plus one power each. So a, a fusion, very good for this slot 15 playstyle. And the uh, facilities here, basically the same thing as that last planet. And defense is a little bit better here. Um, but like I said, most of my planets are set up with very minimal defenses. Like this probably a, a little bit more. This is probably enough to deter you know, your, your medium sized actors who might be trying to hit daily production. But again, if a large fleet wants to get through this, they're going to get through it. Um, but nobody's going to, nobody with a large fleet is going to waste their time, you know, trying to hit you for like 10 bill daily production or something like that. So this planet with that higher dupe mine is pumping out a bit more deuterium per day with it being a colder slot and also having a plus 40 percent booster on it this planet does about 23 million deuterium per day now the next planet here is men with hill this is basically the same thing as the, the last ones you've seen slot 15 negative 122 temp resources here Let's see 45 metal 37 crystal deuterium 42 you know you can see a pattern here and I, I don't think I need to even show you most of these pages at this point, because I think you probably get an idea of what my planets look like. And in fact, if I pull this sheet back up from OG Light, you can see the, the majority of them are built out basically the same. And most of these planets were slot eights relocated into slot 15. There are a couple that I was an idiot and uh, re or colonized into slot 15 to get. Um, so this planet here is an example of that. And the reason that I never deleted this is because I had invested so much in it at the time, I couldn't justify it. And this is from very early on in my account. And I have been able to thankfully, uh, keep, keep it up slot wise by working on the terraformer on it. I can easily go in and dump some resources on this to, to get the, Terraformer up to probably 13 or 14. I'll have to build some solar sats to do so, and that'll cost me a little bit of resources, but I can just scrap them afterwards and get my resources back. So I might do that. Um, but right now, it, it's perfectly fine slot wise. There's still another five slots, and that, that's perfectly fine for the, the near term. I do have all the plus slot items on it. I still have room to do Terraformer. And I also could go through and downgrade like the robotics factory or the shipyard, free up a couple more slots or the research lab. So I, even though this planet is small, I do have options for it. Uh, so again, most of these planets are very similar. Um, this one here, Nellis, is my newest planet. Let's take a look at it. 
This planet is a slot eight currently, um, but I do have it set up just pretty standard with how everything else is set up where it's relying on fusion reactors. Um, and one of the nice things with this, with slot eight is it, I, I basically kept doing colonizations until I got at least a 290 slot. Um, and I was able to get like 292 or 293 or something like that. And I went through and did some terraformers on it, tossed a couple of the uh, plus slot items on it just to see how, if I could get it to, to like 400. And it's pretty close. If I went and uh, did a couple more levels on the terraformer, it'd have over 400 slots. I know I could have probably went for a little bit larger with the colonization, but it took me like 40 with discoverer active to, to go through and get the 290 slot. So I will accept this as is. And defenses here, again, nothing special. Most of these planets, you know, the exact same thing over and over again. Um, I'll show you guys some, just see so you see them here, but you see the, the buildings are fairly consistent on the majority of these. There's a couple that might have a level higher in one mine, um, but you see most things are very similar. This Lazarus planet, I do use this for a lot of my resource trading. So this does have some higher storages on it. This gives me the capacity to go in and uh, say I want to convert metal over to crystal. I can use the merchant, get a good three to two trade rate, and I can get you know, 8 billion crystal at a time easily. And if I wanted to, I could easily double that. Wouldn't be an issue. Uh, Gambit. Gambit is a slot 8 that I have invested a bit in. Um, it has metal 47, so it does differ from the other planets. It also has a plus 40 metal booster active. The fusion reactor is turned off, but it does have a bunch of solar sats on it. And the reason it's got solar sats is because... or the reason it's in slot eight is because this was a slot 15 originally and it was one of the the ones that i actually colonized into slot 15 way back like two plus years ago a really long time ago when i didn't know better and it it still has some slot limitations i've got a couple of the uh the slot boosters active on it. It looks like the only one I don't have active on it right now is a plus four. So the next time I get one from an event, I'll put it on this planet. Um, but I'm at 286 slots. And I think for it being in the slot eight, the temperature is fine. Um, if I look at the metal production here, this planet is getting 81 million metal a day. Quite a bit there. And... Facility wise, the terraformer is at 14. So I, I do have some slots that I could free up. I can get rid of this building because this building's a joke. Uh, that level's too high. Let's get that down to zero. Don't build that building. It sucks. Um, so I, I still have plenty of slots on this for the future. And with it still being in slot eight, I can easily go and get some more solar sats built up move some res over and uh, get that terraformer up a couple more levels if I really wanted. And defense is here a little bit more than some of the others. Um, I think this this would deter people from trying to take out the solar sats probably. A uh, large fleet, you know, again, could still go through and easily do that. But if I saw someone trying to take out the solar sats, I would probably just go scrap them. And then I would just turn the fusion reactor back on, which is currently turned off. And then, of course, I have my home world here. I still have my original home world. I never got rid of it. Um, so it, it is a little bit limited slot wise, but I can just downgrade the shipyard, the, the robotics a couple levels if I really wanted. Um, and I easily could upgrade the terraformer. The terraformer is only level eight right now. I could just pop an energy booster right now and go in and get that up to, to level nine without needing to even build solar sats. So not too worried about that right now. And the other planet I want to go back to is Lazarus because this is my planet that I do a lot of building on with it being the, the one that also has the, the resource, oh, the, the resource storage so high. Um, if I want to go through and build ships, I'll usually do it on this planet to get 
it's got nanite 12 uh, shipyard 18 so it can build things pretty fast and if i go to the shipyard here you can see if i wanted to build a death star it'd do it in 20 seconds now i could easily go in get the nanite up another level to make this you know a little bit faster but realistically I would rather use that res to just build more Death Stars. And if I'm building a large amount of Death Stars, I'm probably just going to use one of the uh, the items to like insta build it. So not too worried about the time there. Everything else builds in a second. And this planet does also have some defenses. This is my only like turtle style planet. And it's not that much compared to other players. But um, if I have a build queue active on this planet, I feel like the defenses here are going to make it too difficult or make it not worth attacking for, for most players. So um, this the defenses do have some benefit here. 50k plasma turrets, um, a million heavy lasers, two and a half million light lasers, 100k goss, 100k light laser or ion cannons. I feel like the defenses are okay. It's probably not the best composition, but it works. Um, I haven't had anybody yet go and hit like my light fighters that are building here. So good so far, but now that I've said it, someone's going to go through and do it. So now let's take a look at the, uh, the overall production here before I get into the moons. So with this account, the overall production that I am getting from my mines each day, if I go to Empire. With the items active right now, so I have a couple plus 10, plus 20 boosters active on planets. Um, right now, if I look, I don't know why it's showing up like that, but I am currently getting uh, 736 million metal per day about 159 million crystal a day and deuterium 255 million so all around i think it's pretty good and the, the number from info comp here isn't accounting for something but you can see what the the empire said there and i guess og light does say it here too the 737 mil metal a day 159 mil crystal and then 255 mil deuterium Okay, so let's take a look at the planets now, or not the planets, the moons. Uh, most of these moons are going to be very similar to the other stuff. But most of them don't really have much defense. Um, and I'll go through these real quick. The buildings on them are all pretty similar. I'll go through the buildings here quickly. I'm just using the OG light keybind to, to cycle through, uh, through them real quick. You see most of them, lunar base, like eight or nine, sensor phalanx, eight or nine, jump gate, one or two. This one here, that doesn't have much built on it yet. Uh, that is from, or that is the moon of, of my 16th planet, um, which I just set up about a week or two back. So I just haven't transported resources over to it yet. This moon has quite a bit of investment in on it, and you'll see the defenses here in a minute. Um, but this moon, I think, would be a pain for someone to go in and take down. I mean, it's it's certainly doable. It's not invincible, um, but it would be a bit of work to do. But I have built up a fair bit on it. So let's take a look at the defenses now. Not much, just a, a couple light lasers. A little bit here or there. Most of these don't have much defense, but this one does. This one has 100k rocket launchers, 200k light lasers, 10k heavy lasers, 50k plasma turrets. So this is the, the moon that I was just talking about having a fair bit built up on it. Um, and if I go to the overview page, you can see it's got 59 slots on it. You don't usually see moons with that much uh, built up on it. It's not max size either. It's it's the second best moon size you can get without uh, life farm. So it's 88. 31 um i think it's perfectly fine like with the the defenses here um someone could most certainly go through and do a moon destruction against this but it would be a lot of work 
you know, if you wanted to send Death Stars against this, you would basically have to clear out the defenses. So that gives me quite a bit of time to to see or to be notified by my alliance that, hey, your military points dropping, you know, because it, it would probably take someone at least an hour to, to go through and IPM these defenses down, probably longer. So I have quite a bit of time to, to respond if someone were to actually try and moon destruct this moon here. Not much on this one. Uh, basically nothing on most of these. This one does have a little bit on it. And the reason for the investment in defense on this one is because this planet does have or, or was in a safe system with that Lazarus planet. Um, so both the moons in that safe system back on Terra Z had like 50k plasma turrets on them and that's a lot of work for people to go through. So you see, most of them don't have much defense, but the, the two that used to be in a safe system together have quite a bit of defense on them now. Now, one thing I forgot to mention planet-wise is this space dock meta. Um, it, it does have a little bit of defenses on it planet-wise, but not as much as that Lazarus one. And... One of the nice things with this planet is it has Space Dock 13 on it. Space Dock 13 cost a lot of resources to do. And basically when they did the first rewards events back in early 2022, they gave the Space Dock out as a reward like two or three times. And with those events, I just kept claiming it. And the Space Dock scales up cost-wise quite aggressively. It's five times per per level. So I think I built up level 12 and then I claimed, or no, I built up to level 11. I then claimed 12 and then I claimed 13 here. So when I claimed 13 for free, that was 60 million points that I got out of it. And there isn't much benefit. There, there's not actually for 11 verse 13 here on this universe, but if they ever run it again, I'll get up to level 14 on this, and that'll be like 300 million points that I would get out of this if they ever give this away again. So that is it for the planets and moons, and I think next up is going to be research. So let's head on over and take a look at that. Okay, so research-wise, I have energy 23. The reason for that is because that is directly working with my fusion reactors, and I have a calculator here where you can see, you know, how, how the level scales up or how the power production from the fusion reactor scales up based on the level of the fusion reactor and then also energy. If you Google fusion reactor calculators, there's some online. Uh, so you can see how increasing the energy level does have a nice impact for, for the fusions here. You can also upgrade the fusions to get more power, but if you upgrade the energy technology, then that is directly increasing the amount of energy you get per level of a fusion reactor. So that's a pie for that. Then I have laser tech at 21 for some unknown reason. Ion tech at 20. I just claimed the 20th level from the recent event that gave it away. Uh, I then have hyperspace tech at 19. Plasma tech at 20. Combustion drive at 22, ion or impulse drive at 18, hyperspace drive at 18. Espionage technology is at 25, um, but I recently got the 25th level for free from a recent event. So I went through and insta built 23 and 24, and then I claimed uh, 25 for free. Computer tech is 21, Astro is 29. I did that in the last uh, count walkthrough. Intergalactic Research Network is at 12. I could probably go through and not, you know, get this up another two or three levels to make it so all planets are connected. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, I don't think it, the, the return would really be worth it given how much that cost. Graviton is at four right now, and the, the entire reason Graviton is at four is because I was working on Terraformer, 
So Terraformer 14 requires 8.2 million energy. And if I go back to Graviton here, Graviton level four is 8.1. So if I already had the energy for uh, the Terraformer, I figured why not also go and, you know, get the Graviton while I'm right there, while I have the energy. So that's why that's at four. Weapons tech is 23. Shields 23 and armor 24. So uh, I do have a couple things here that I would like to work on, but at this time, I am just going to continue to wait for the life form stuff because I think the benefit uh, I would see from that would far outweigh what I would get from going to like hyperspace 20 or getting some of these speed boosts from some of these techs here. So I'm going to wait for life forms before I work on research or the tech tree stuff anymore. And the next thing I want to go through and take a look at is my fleet. So my fleet right now is going to be about 15 million light fighters. I do have some queued up. So as soon as those queues finish, I should be right around 15 mil again. Uh, then I have a million heavy fighters, million cruisers, 101k battleships, 1.5 million battle cruisers, 5.5k bombers, 100k destroyers, 17k death stars, 22k reapers, 405k pathfinders, and then on the civilian side of things, I have a little over a million small cargoes. Um, in total, I think I have about 1.4 million large cargoes. They're, they're scattered on all the planets. Uh, I've got some uh, colony ships here, uh, 1.2 mil probes, and then 3 million recyclers. So when I moved over to this universe, it became clear, given the higher debris field setting, that I would need to increase my recycler count. So that has been one of my main goals here. And I think I was at like 750k or a million recyclers when I went through the merge process. So I've ramped this up quite a bit and it's been worth it so far. I've had some, some nice hits here as I have shown off in some of my prior O game videos. Now, uh, with this fleet moving forward, I'm not quite sure what I want to do to to build this fleet up further. Um, again, I have a pretty good lead and can take on most of the other fleets if they're on their own that are currently in the universe. But long term, you know, I always need to, to be building this up if I want it to, to remain competitive. So... I'm debating between more battles, more battle cruisers, and or maybe like focusing on getting some more destroyers. Um, with the life form stuff, there's going to be some techs that are boosting destroyers and battle cruisers. So I'm thinking of doing a split focus on the the battle cruiser and uh, destroyer techs because I can easily fit those into my tech tree. I don't have room with what I'm planning to do to get the heavy fighter tech, the cruiser tech, or the battleship tech, so I don't really want to invest in those further. I would rather invest in the ships that I am going to be getting the techs for and boosting up quite a bit. So battle cruisers and destroyers look like the play to me right now. That may change my opinion, you know, may shift over time. Maybe I'll want to, you know, go through and round out my Death Star count to like 20k. I don't know, but I might just uh, just wait, just just keep waiting for life forms to arrive before I settle and figure what I'm going to build up next. OK, next up, I want to head over to the items that I currently have. I don't really, you know, buy the res packs. I'm not a fan of of that meta. Um, I mean, I've I've gotten a few in the past, like I, I've bought a handful of the, the metal packs during the, the sales, but I'm not going to sit over here and, you know, dump hundreds and hundreds in to, like, get a billion points like some people do. Um, so most of my resource packs are from events. The class changes are from events. And basically every other item you see here is going to be from events. I do have quite a few. Um, there are some of these, like, Detroids and these types of things where I have went through and bought these. So that if I have to like insta build a ship queue, I can go through and do that real quick, real easily. 
So I have done that. And I think I picked up a plus fleet slot item during a recent sale just to have it on hand. Yeah, I think it was one of the 90 day ones. So I have bought those, but like everything else you see in most of the, even most of these fleet ones, um, I earned from events. So I don't really buy the, uh, the items like I used to way back when I first started up the account, I was running like the, the plus 40 deuteriums on my planet or plus thirties or whatever for, for quite a while. But I just lost interest in doing that. And when I looked at the numbers, I figured if I was ever going to put money in to, to buy these, you know, these boosters here, I would be better off just buying the resource packs. Uh, it just, you, you end up with more res in most cases buying the resource packs than you do from buying the uh, production boosters. Okay, so that's items. And the next thing I wanted to look at is the add-ons that I use. So let's head on over and take a look there. Okay, so add-on-wise, everything I use is a tolerated add-on or a fork of a tolerated add-on just to, to make it still work in the modern state. Um, so I've got OG Lite. Uh, PTRE here is integrated with OG Lite and is fully tolerated. I have O-Game Tracker, Universe View, and Infocomp. So for Infocomp, I am still running the older version and... This is a fork of the, the old one, and it was simply changed to, to make sure it would work in version 9 of the game, because by default, the old version of Infocomp just stopped working once V9 went live, so that this is a fork of it just to fix that issue. I then have OG Light on, which I've done a video about in the past, and that is fully tolerated. Uh, there is a new version of Infocomp also by the stubs, and it is uh, over on the French forms. I am running the auction hotkeys. Specifically, I am using the uh, the version that was put into the, the form thread. It's a couple years old, so it basically just uh, fixed the functionality, but they note that it doesn't work with... Uh, some of the add-ons it is incompatible with anti-game apparently so just keep that in mind and i'll have links to all these down below if you want to set them up yourself o game tracker very handy it tracks expeditions and gives you some nice information and then universe view that's always been handy so uh with og light is probably the one that i end up getting the most use out of if i want to go through and transport resources it makes things so, so easy. I've shown this off in the video that I did about OG Lite, but you you see, I can literally just you know hold down the button. It's set up to use large cargoes and transport, and I can do this super fast. Now, there were a couple of functionalities that I didn't talk about <clears throat> when I did the video. You can use this to to say. Let's say I want to build up a mine on this planet. I see here the amount of resources I need. What I can do with OG Light is hit this button here, go to the moon that has the resources, and I can say I want to ship those resources to that planet. It'll auto fill out the amount of large cargoes I need, and it'll automatically get, get it set up to, to transport the stuff to that planet. So it's pretty handy. But it's also got nice functionality for doing expeditions. So if you're someone trying to do uh, expeditions, you can do this quite easily. They have keybind set up, so you can just spam them. Sometimes you might have to, to spam it a couple times to make sure it targets the right spot. If you go too fast, the, the game doesn't detect that you've changed the target but just like this you know a matter of seconds i got you know six expeditions sent out there so under 20 seconds or like 23 seconds to send out six expeditions there you 
it, it's pretty handy add on. All those quick. I don't want to leave any ships out on the moon, you know, when I go to beds. Uh, but that's some some nice functionality there. And what else do I have here? O game tracker. So O game tracker is really great for keeping track of your expeditions for if you're doing any of that. It'll tell you your your gains and losses from combats, debris fields. Um and it's also got a nice nice thing here to, to let you figure out what to build next. And this factors into life form stuff if that is enabled on your universe. I'm unfortunately still on a universe which doesn't have that stuff, but with this I can see what would be, you know, the best thing for me to work on next, which is a lot of metal mines and a lot of deuterium mines. So that would be what I would work on next for my, for my mines if I were not saving up for life forms. So all of those add-ons are going to be linked down below again if you want to check them out. OG Light, I even have a video on. It is just such an amazing add-on. It has massively improved the, uh, the quality of life of doing things in this game for me. Okay. And next up... I want to talk about my thoughts on the universe and just like my my general plans for moving forward. So with this universe, it's not the the most active uh, fleeter wise. That's why I ended up settling my 16th colony recently. I got a few hits out of the mobile and then I figured long term, I'm just going to get more out of this if I just set it up as uh, another planet for uh, for my mines. So that's what I've done. Um, I think that with the, the military situation, I feel like the, the OPP people are up to something. They, they've gotten a few new fleets recently, and there's definitely been increased activity uh, spy-wise. So I don't know if they're going to have a run at me or if they're going to have a go at one of my allies here, but... Definitely feel like they're they're up to something. So that could be interesting uh, in the near future. It'll be inter if they try to go after me. It'll be interesting to to see how they do it because I don't think they even know where my fleet is most of the time. So got that going for me. Um, mine wise, I don't think I'm going to really build up much more mine wise right now. Rather, I think I'm just going to continue to save up the the resources that I have. Uh, for the life forms expansion, you know, I don't know when that's going to drop, but what I know right now is that I currently have about 61 to 62 billion MSU on me. And I know that if I want to go for like slot 18 rock tall on 16 planets, I've got just enough to do it. I don't have enough for all of the, the techs yet, uh, but that is something that I'm going to, to continue saving up for. So I think that's really the plan is just to, to keep waiting and saving for, for life forms, because even with uh, an investment like this of 71 billion MSU, I mean, that's a pretty substantial production boost and boost to, to some of the ships that I utilize. So I think that's, uh, that's probably what I'll keep doing is just saving up. But that's pretty much my account. You know, if you have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to drop them down below. Uh, again, you know, most of the planets are, are going to be set up the same. That's just generally how it goes in this game is your, your planets are going to be long term. They're going to be set up pretty similar to each other. Um, my fleet. I'm pretty happy with where my fleet is right now, but there's there's always room for improvement. And like I said before, I think more battle cruisers or destroyers is probably the play long term. I couldn't always work on more light fighter fodder, but building light fighters just sucks. If I'm being entirely honest, um, cap of 100k per per Q uh, sort of sucks, and the inability to build more than one per second per planet also makes them a bit of a pain to build up. 
But that's going to be it for this video today. I'd like to say again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. And for any of you that are playing O game or want to try it out, uh, again, please remember to hit the affiliate link down below the next time you want to start up on a new universe. It does indeed help me out quite a bit. Thank you all for watching and see you guys around.